So bank involves in commercial transactions of lending and borrowing. The Banking Regulation Act acts as a Bible, acts as a system that is going to transform the entire banking scenario. RBI was entrusted with a huge responsibility of guiding the banks and getting the commercial transactions in place. Good morning and welcome to the session 4 of the unit 2 in management of banking and insurance services. Now this session we are going to speak about the most important regulation act that's the banking regulation act 1949 though the number the years are quite old but still this is the act that actually led to the reform of the banks in India. So moving forward, let's try to understand what is the Banking Regulations Act altogether. In the year 1949, it was enacted, that is in 16th March 1949, the Banking Regulation Act was enacted to consolidate the regulatory laws relating to banking, also define the transactions that can be carried out by the commercial banks and bring them all together under one roof. Now, what is the majority that of action that a bank does altogether. It does into terms of lending and borrowing. So bank involves in commercial transactions of lending and borrowing. But let's go back a few years or rather I would say a century back where the Indian banking system was just about to begin, about to bloom altogether. Now if you look at the Indian banking scenario 100 years back, we were all non-commercial in terms of let's say that we were all started up by a private groups and each one of them were clustered according to the region. Gujarat had their own set of bank that is Gujarat and Maharashtra. In the South Canada district of Karnataka they had their own set of banks. Tamil Nadu had its own set of bank that is the state of Madras at that point of time. The Telangana side, they had a bank, the Madhya Pradesh or probably the Jammu Kashmir, the Delhi, the, that region had their own banking systems altogether. Somewhere down the lane, what happened in India is that banking was never consolidated and put into a common group or a common understanding altogether. What was happening in the banking sector is that every single private player wanted to come in and start doing his own trade and transaction under his own convenience with their own rules and laws. Now banking was a completely a localized exercise 100 years back. So the concept of banking was known only to very few section of players and those were concentrated in that cluster, in that zone alone. They were not trying to come out, they were not trying to make it as a nationalized exercise. The ideology was very simple. Why? Because people did not know much of banking. There was not much of money available in the market. No big liquidity or no big employment schemes going at that point of time. So the banks were restricting themselves in operations. So what happened over a period of time is that banks became localized heroes altogether. They were all like the local heads. So when you talk about a Maharashtra state bank or when you talk about the state of Gujarat bank or when you suddenly start talking about a Canara bank, these were all localized and they were catering to that needs of the people. But what we wanted is that we wanted a system in place, we wanted a process in place that could consolidate the entire banking exercise, that could consolidate the whole gamut in terms of the banking operations, bring in a law, a regulatory system that could define how transactions have to be done, that could define how system has to come into place. So what is happening right now is that the Banking Regulation Act acts as a Bible, acts as a system that is going to transform the entire banking scenario. So what we did with this law, what we did with this enactment is that we started bringing in rules and regulations that could 
change the banking history altogether. Followed by the act gives the supervisory and regulatory powers to RBI over the banks. So basically all cooperative banks registered in this case will not be covered under this because they comes under the Cooperative Society Act altogether and therefore the powers regarding incorporation, management, elections to the board of director still rest with the registrar of cooperative society that is at the state and center. But then we are more considered about the RBI coming into picture and controlling the banks. Now if you see here, moment with the enactment, the role coming into picture, the Banking Act of 1949, what happened is that RBI was given the in charge to become the super leader of bank, the monitor of all banking activities. So RBI was entrusted with a huge responsibility of guiding the banks and getting the commercial transactions in place. So RBI had to lay down the rules, regulation, how much is the interest rate to be fixed, what is going to be the monetary policy, what's going to be the borrowing rate, how we are going to manage the foreign exchange, what is going to be on the export and import, what kind of loans, every single question that can be looked in from the banking perspective, RBI had to answer, RBI had to take a call, including the board, the management, the governance, every single practice that has been told all together has been bought in by the RBI. So this is where the Banking Regulation Act became very, very interesting because it started interesting people with a lot of ideology, with a lot of power saying that how the Banking Act is going to go forward in future. Moving forward, the objectives of the Banking Act to safeguard the interest of the depositors first and the foremost thing which I would like to talk about. Today, when you go to a bank and you want to deposit your money, no doubt about it because you want your hard earned money to earn a good interest, to earn a good rate of return because that is your hard earned money, you have put an effort to earn that money. But what happens over a period of time is that the amount of defaults, the amount of scams, the amount of deregulation that has been happening in the banking scenario, failures in terms of repaying back the amount to the customer is really pulling up. It's really showing up a situation where depositors are losing their trust, losing their ability on bank. Now, with the recent case of the Lakshmi Villas Bank, the S Bank that we are talking about, or when we are going to talk about the DHFL and so many other factors where people have seen that they have started losing the trust. In fact, the Punjab Maharashtra Cooperative Bank, all these kind of factors where you suddenly start seeing that the investors, the depositors are left in lurch. They do not have an option at all rather than crying over their fate. What happened to their money that was deposited in this bank? When they had deposited the money, they were promised that yes, on a regular basis, they would be getting their interest. They would be assured about the money that has been put inside their accounts. But then at the end of the day, when something turns other way around, when something turns on the negative aspect altogether, where will the depositor go? What is the backup for them? Who is going to come back and assure them that their money is not going to go anywhere? So that means you need an act, you need a policy, you need a regulation, you need a system that can come back and assure the depositors that whatever happens to your money, we are there to back it up. So that is where RBI comes into picture by coming into the fact saying that Banking Regulation Act, the first objective says that it's there to provide and safeguard the interest of the depositors. So any point of time, the depositors must not lose their heart and money followed by to develop banking institutions on sound lines after the independence the one area where India was really interested in terms of developing itself into a superhero or into a super sector altogether was banking sector because the amount of trust that has gone in into the banking sector is quite huge 
every single committee every single budget exercise that has happened in the government of india there has always been a special interest shown towards the lines of banking because banking is something which is the lifeline of the economy and every committee whether it's going to be the narasimhan committee that we have been speaking about the basel committee norms or we are going to talk about the any further activities that have been recommended by the rbi as well as the world institutions they've always tried to focus on the banking scenario now what is the ideology here is that unless and until you are able to get a good banking and finance scenario i mean to say the operational levels being on the best standards as far as possible the economy will not be able to function smoothly so the second objective of the banking regulation act of 1949 is to ensure that every single bank in india functions smoothly and on a regular basis following the ethics and laws if they are going to do something against the practice if they are going to deviate from the norms and standards then that is definitely going to have an impact on the economy so the second objective was very very clear that we want to bring in the best practices in the banking scenario in the banking sector so that everybody gets benefited and the economy starts pulling up followed by to attune the monetary and the credit system that has been of the larger interest and priority of the nation so whenever the rbi is going going to talk about a monetary policy a credit policy that's going to be rolled out the aim of rbi is to see that everybody's interest is safeguarded everybody is being given a priority everybody is being told about what is happening because monetary policy is not for you and for me it's for the entire nation it's for all the banks it's for all the institutions who are a part of this large economy the great economy that we have been talking about so when we are creating a monetary policy when we are creating a credit rating system all together we need to ensure that every point of time the best interest rates are quoted the best rates are being provided to the customer and at the same time the banking sector is not getting affected it cannot be a one way policy all together it has to be a policy that tries to address the interest of the bank as well as the customers so always the objective of the banking regulation act also comprise that let's bring in a sound monetary policy which is able to guide us which is able to take us forward in terms of thinking followed by the provisions of the banking regulation act as of right now now several powers have been included in the banking regulation act as i have told you the major aim here is about the supervision and regulation so we have also tried to understand the companies act of 1956 the primary agriculture credit so society the cooperative society factors the, there are certain things where we have excluded them why because if you suddenly start seeing that the agriculture and the cooperatives they are not a form of the full fledged banking act they do not belong to the same banking scenario so they have been removed from this particular act they come under the nbfc altogether but then coming back to the banking scenario coming back to the banking part altogether we are going to talk about how the reserve bank of india has been empowered to run this scenario the first thing to license banks have regulation over shareholding and shareholders let me talk about this for a minute why because if you have been talking about banking today the biggest challenge for rbi is to whether give you a license or not yes bank was one of the last and the latest banks ever to get a license from rbi to say the youngest bank to enter into the scenario and this happened way back in the year 2010 itself now 10 or 11 years back when yes bank was into the action altogether rbi had its own reasons for why they wanted to give this particular license but then after 10 years when we are talking about the yes bank scenario that happened in the year 2019 20 altogether people are now getting skeptical about the fact that whether should i give another license to a bank and there are several reasons coming up why we should not give a license rather than promoting banking because banking is a sensitive business it is not going to be a business where you can just start a shop and close it as and when you want you need to earn the trust of the customer you need to earn the faith of the customers in terms of banking and in terms of taking it forward now what is happening here is that 
RBI has to think several times before it starts giving a license to the bank. Similarly, when you talk about the board, when you talk about the management, the shareholding pattern and the different scenarios, RBI needs to get completely understanding onto the factor, completely on the understanding note that yes, this bank is doing extremely well. To give you another example here, recently Aditya Puri, the former MD and CEO of HDFC Bank, stepped down from his post after serving the bank for almost 27 years onto that great role but after that they did find out another CEO named Jagdishan who's now take taken over the MD and CEO of HDFC Bank now when that takeover was happening you could imagine the RBI's intrusion inside in terms of getting the approval in terms of getting the shareholders approval in terms of getting the board and the management in picture Although one side the COVID and the other activities were running in, the transition that was happening inside a great banking scenario or a banking industry like HDFC, they did have a lot of impact on the economy. So somewhere down the lane, what was happening is that RBI wants to ensure very, very clearly that the transition, the licensing and the board affairs are regularly managed in the best way possible. Next one, to supervise the appointment of boards and management. In the case of S Bank, when Rana Kapoor wanted his own daughter to become the executive director on the board, the board members op opposed it and also the shareholders were against it. The reason was that there were several factors behind it where they did not want the family members to again come into picture. And probably you could have seen in the papers the fight that was going between Rana Kapoor and Madhu Kapoor who were involved in the board activities of the S Bank. Now that is also an important scenario where you need to understand if the board and the governance is not being in the proper place, RBI will have all the rights to come back, supervise the activity and tell the people what is the challenge that is happening there. So it becomes highly important for all of us us to understand that the appointment of the board members, the appointment of CEO, the senior management members, all will be regulated by the RBI. The next thing, to regulate the operations of the bank, how does your bank function? Is it doing well in terms of credit? What is the NPA ratio? What is the collections ratio? In what is the term loans? How are you doing it? What are the schemes? So what is the basic level operation of the bank will be again determined by the RBI itself. So RBI will gain a supervisory power in terms of overlooking the operations of the bank. Why? Because many a times you might have seen that we would just go ahead and believe that the bank is doing very well, but then it is not true. So RBI wants to know the operational level fundamentals that are happening inside your bank, followed by lay down the instruction for audit, control, moratorium and the liquidation. Definitely, yes, with the current scenario that we have undergoing, the moratorium practices, the liquidity practices, how we have controlled it, all these factors are coming in from the RBI. Why? Because for a bank perspective, what happens is that they just want to give forward in terms of the loans and acts, but then that is not going to be true every time. So what is coming into picture is that the RBI has to come forward and control these factors, followed by issue directives in interest of public good on the banking policy and impose penalties Some penalty is going to be a very big factor here because suppose if the bank tries to misguide the customer tries to do something against the system or against the law that means RBI will come back and tell the bank that yes you have misguided the customers you have left them in trouble so you will be imposed a penalty for that particular act followed by the amendment to the banking act the amendment to the banking act was happening but in 1965 there was an amendment that came into picture where they started trying to understand the cooperative banks under this purview by adding the section 56 of the act that was very very important why because cooperative banks which operate only in one state are formed and run by the state government but licensing is controlled by rbi and they also regulate the business operation so though the 
you know the registration happens at the state level but still it is the role of the RBI which controls the activities of this cooperative banks including its operations factors and you, you might have seen that RBI is the directive policy in terms of giving all these NBFCs what needs to be done how it needs to be done so that's where the amendment came into picture which was a very very important amendment trying to take into the factor the banks and the other sector so this is banking act was a supplement act to the previous one recently the Lok Sabha had also passed an amendment on banking regulation act of 1949 and it got promoted in the year June 2020 altogether it's replaced by the ordinance now that's a fantastic amendment which they have said about the NPAs about the regulatory about the moratorium the interest factors and other things so that's going to be a landmark in terms of the amendment and that's really wonderful to see that how they have come forward in terms of regulating the bank and taking it forward followed by the amendment will bring cooperative banks under the direct supervision of RBI now this is a very very important thing which I would like to touch upon why because RBI feels that the cooperative banks try to do things on their own will and wish there have been several deviations several cooperative banks chit fund companies mutual fund companies who have gone ahead and cheated the customers who have gone ahead and done things at their own will and wish which is not acceptable at any point of time so that is where RBI wants to bring in a stricter control a restriction on the cooperative banks in terms of their operation and that's what RBI was able able to do it so RBI getting the power they were able to amalgamate and reconstruct the entire scenario now they have bought in stricter rules and regulations so that the cooperative banks cannot go into a defaulting position followed by let me just show you some of the sections of this great banking regulation act we are starting with about there are totally 56 sections but the most important of them are the section 10 bb power of rbi to appoint the whole time director basis the managing director and other factors section level requirement of minimum paid up capital which is coming up these days section 12 regulation of paid up capital authorized capital section 17 very very important reserve fund that's where we are talking about the Lakshmi Vilas Bank section 18 the cash reserve that has been maintained section 20 restriction on loans and advances recently RBI was trying to tell HDFC Bank that you know when there are certain factors there are certain norms that they had to follow and even there was a court order on HDFC not to go ahead with their digital launches so you know there are certain restrictions which has been played with the RBI and with the government altogether section 21 power to control advances by the banking so RBI becomes the superpower here the next one is the Section 21A, the another version, rates of interest charged by banking company subjected to that of the scrutiny by court and the most important section 22 licensing of bank companies altogether, which came up in the S Bank case. Now, followed by the section 23, which is prohibiting the banks from opening new place business change of premises. All these things have to be on the approval of RBI. I cannot just go forward and say that from tomorrow onwards, I will change my place from Chennai to Ahmedabad. Now, that cannot be accepted. RBI has to give a prior approval. RBI has to give a prior name altogether as how you are going and what is going to happen. Each banking company under section 26 has to submit their annual return, which is very, very important. Section 29, the accounts and balance sheet, followed by 36A, the power of RBI to remove any managerial or any other person who have been found doing some mistake. 36AB to appoint the additional directors, again RBI has it, and 36AE, the power of the central government that has been followed altogether in terms of acquiring undertaking. 39 RBA to be official liquidator. Yes, this is going to be in the case of DHFL. I feel that because there is going to be a lot of factors coming in forward in news. Section 46, the penalties that is coming up, which is very, very important. 47A, power of RBI to impose the penalties. 49, special provisions of the banking companies. And 49A, restriction of acceptance of deposit withdrawal factor. 49B, change of name by the banking company. This is a very live case which I would like to talk about. When UTI Bank got its name changed to Axis Bank, 
bank they had used this particular section section 49b because uti bank wanted to change their name to axis bank remaining everything remaining constant so they had bought in section 49b which can be used to change your name with the approval of rbi 52 power of rbi to make rules again in the case of yes bank when mr prashant kumar was uh, given the power to become the administrator of yes bank rbi had used the power and bought in section 52 where rbi said that going forward they will bring in the administrator to manage the banking altogether followed by the penalties now penalty is a very very big thing that you need to understand from the banking scenario so if a person deliberately misrepresents the figures or all things or omits documents like the balance sheet false documents everything there is a straight three year imprisonment that's going to come up if a person is unsuccessful in furnishing documents under section 35 now what's going to happen to the inspection officer where he's going to question you and there's going to be a penalty of 2000 rupees per offense if the company does not follow the orders then every person employed under that company is directly responsible to be charged and punished by the law if the company commits contravention with the negligence that too especially from the secretary directors and other things again the officials will be punished company accepts bright deposits or in contravention of any other orders without the knowledge of the directors they will be punished because this is going to lead to a scenario where the business can get completely hampered so you see here the penalties are more from the internal perspective unless and until the bank is able to get a complete clarity in terms of their operation as what they are doing how they are doing it they are not supposed to take anything for assumption and continue forward so that is how the banking regulation act becomes a very very important factor with this i come to the conclusion of this session i hope and believe that this session was highly useful informative and resourceful in nature in the next section in the next class we will be able to see about the various other factors of banking laws rules and regulation with what are all the new developments that are coming up in terms of management of banking and insurance. Until then, stay tuned, stay blessed and stay enlightened forever. Thank you once again for joining me on this wonderful session.